Hey there folks, Zane from the Infinite Jukebox, aka the number one injury reserve fan, here with another album review, and today I wanted to talk about the new Richie record, Triple Digits. After the trio injury reserve ended their time on this planet with the tragic 2021 masterpiece that is by the time I get to Phoenix, the surviving members of the trio, Parker, Corey, and Richie, seemed like they were going to take a step back from things for a little bit, from music, from the arts, and I think that everybody knew they were going to be back in some form or another, how or when was certainly up in the air, but I think everybody knew they would eventually be back in some form and that ended up ringing true in 2023 when they debuted the duo project by storm a project meant to carry on the legacy of injury reserve while simultaneously managing to act as a project that continued beyond that and creating its own legacy however immediately after that project's debut there was very limited work being put out from it besides the music video and single double trio and in the little under a year since that's debuted, we haven't heard anything else from them, really. While the aforementioned Parker Corey has seemingly found himself intentionally taking a step back behind the scenes for a variety of pretty notable projects within the realm of indie and alternative within the music industry as a writer and general behind the scenes individual, the other half of the remaining living members of Injury Reserve, Richie, has taken the time to finally make his proper solo debut. With his first full-length studio album, Triple Digits, Richie proves that he does not need to in any way be attached with any multi-artist project to still be one of the most consistently boundary-pushing rappers and artists within the entirety of rap right now. In fact, I think it's pretty arguable that this, along with the rest of his body of work up to this point, is pretty much impossible to 100% define by any specific genres. And I mean, hey, similar things can be said about this record. So if you're like me and you're, um, uh, what's, uh, what's the word? Oh, you're a dork, then you'll probably like this just as much as I do, if not even more. In terms of actual performance work, Richie's performances here feel very varied. They feel like they're executed in a manner that highlights his own unique set of skills as a rapper, and I find him very interesting as a person in terms of how he puts himself out there artistically, because I would say that in terms of sheer flow and personality, Richie manages to act as a very esoteric figure. I don't think that there's anyone out there like him right now doing anything remarkably similar to what he's doing. I mean, I'm sure that'll change in the next five to ten years as he influences people, but in present moment, as he's in his prime right now, I don't really think that there's anyone super comparable to him. I'm not saying that makes him better or worse for it, I just kind of think that's an interesting general observation. Now, the reason I find that interesting isn't just because he's a pretty singular figure. I find that interesting because I don't necessarily think that there's a huge appeal to him, yet at the same time, that kind of is the appeal. Like I said, he has a lot of esoteric qualities, a lot of styles that he's willing to jump between from song to song. He doesn't have a singular form of delivery, not even a singular emotional persona going on throughout this record or any record that he's ever been involved with that makes him feel like this instantly recognizable character or persona from delivery and presence alone. He's instantly recognizable because he's easily one of, again, the most boundary-pushing musicians within this particular artistic space at the moment. And you can really see the variety that he does inject into his own work throughout this record with virtually every single track here feeling pretty unique in one way or another. I mean, the wobbly and almost drunken sounding flow that he delivers on the title track works out better than it really should. The almost sing-song kind of delivery on tracks like Richie Valens, a great single from the record, is an example of how great he can be from a melodic standpoint, which is something that I feel a lot of experimentalists within his ballpark can't really achieve as well as Richie has. And some of the harder flows that he delivers on here throughout tracks like WYTD, I think do prove that he can be this heavy and even somewhat imposing figure when he chooses to be, it's just a matter of exactly that, what he chooses to be for an individual track. 
And while I would understand the perspective of someone saying that this makes the record feel disconnected, disjointed, whatever, however you want to word it, I personally feel like that is why I like Richie so much. He's a guy that's constantly experimenting. He's constantly pulling through with new ideas, new sounds. He's dedicating himself to these sounds for the entirety of a track before moving on to a different experiment. And he happens to just be so consistently successful at it that there's never any point where I take a step back and say, ah, oh, man, that one thing that you did there didn't really work because even if there are a couple of lesser moments on this record just like any other record in existence i do think that at a very constant rate this album triple digits is extremely exciting from an artistic standpoint and richie is the one to point at in terms of making this record feel as adventurous as it ultimately is that isn't to mention his lyrical game, which I wouldn't say is really the centerpiece of the record or anything like that, but it definitely is something worth looking into if that's a particular quality of lyrical music that you really do find yourself gravitating towards. And I think that he ranges from the introspective to the extremely abstract and almost haunting, the latter of which can really nicely be seen on the track Get a Fade, which I've seen being very under-discussed. I think that song in particular needs more love. I love how bit-crushed things are. Are there. I love the absolute crunchiness of the vocals. I mean, at this point, Richie has shown himself to be a notable personality, a notable figure within underground rap and various other subgenres that he participates in in making his own experimentational work. But at the same time, I also think that there is an argument to be made that the lack of singular identity that he partakes in is also his identity. Like I said, he's this guy constantly experimenting, constantly going with new sounds in new directions. And I do think that there is no singular vibe for Richie as an artist. There's no singular vibe for this album or any record that this man has ever been involved with in a major way at the very least. And while I do think that a lesser artist would see this and go in this direction and have a lack of creative identity, I really do feel like this ultimately results in Richie being able to take triple digits as an opportunity to show off his versatility, to show off the many different creative directions he is capable of succeeding in, etc, etc. I just think that this record, despite initially looking like an absolute mess, manages to be a pretty beautiful mess, if not just a well-put-together album that just looks messy from the surface. The production throughout Triple Digits is predictably excellent as well, though to be fair, I feel like if you are remotely familiarized with anything that Richie has worked on in the past and the high standards that projects he's involved with tend to have in terms of production value and quality, I, I mean, I, I think you would expect this to be produced well, but just in case you were worried that it wouldn't be, I, it is. It's produced extremely well, actually. As I said, stylistically, the record bounces around a variety of different sounds from song to song, and on first listen, that makes for a lot of suspense, not knowing what's going to come next, and upon many repeated listens, it continuously acts as a hook where, even if there is a track that you don't like as much as the rest, it still feels fresh and unique and interesting in the context of the album, because every single song here has its own unique creative identity, and in my personal opinion, I think that that was a great avenue for Richie and his collaborators here to go down. Some tracks here deal with the harsher and almost more industrial side of Richie's sound, which is one that I personally do like a lot, though I will say that is heavily dialed back here and largely replaced in favor of some almost jazz-like influences, not necessarily traditional jazz, you're not getting A Tribe Called Quest on this or anything like that, but definitely some sort of modern neo-jazz, jazz fusion kind of influences going on here. It's very difficult to explain, but when you get these instrumentals that feel very smooth and laid back and chill with these extremely odd time signatures and general structures, I, I feel like it does make some degree of sense, and those influences are often paired with very abstract soul influences that you get on a number of songs here, like Looping, as well as the album closer Five On The, which I think ultimately makes for a really unique sound in the few moments where those influences do meet up and combine for the entirety of a given track. I mean, no matter which way you slice it, I do feel like virtually every single sound, for the most part at least, that is presented on this record suits Richie pretty well. I mean, I will say that not everyone's going to love everything here, obviously, the beauty of subjectivity and all that, but from my personal perspective at least, I think he kills it for the most part, with virtually everything here coming across as really well executed from a production standpoint, from a creative direction standpoint, from a performance standpoint, etc, etc. And like I said, there are a couple of 
weaker qualities about this record, which I'll touch on in a little bit. But those moments are deeply outweighed by the sheer quality in, well, all of those categories that I just mentioned that are constantly on display here. It's nice to see Amine produce Dizzy, which is easily one of the best songs in general of the year so far. I mean, between one of Richie's most energized performances ever to date, alongside some amazing, lush, but still somewhat abstract, somewhat jagged production going on from Amine there, I think it makes for one of the best songs that either have ever been involved with. Genuinely, like I said, one of my favorite songs of the year so far. And that's just one producer of many here. I mean, he's arguably the biggest name here, Amine, I mean. But at the same time, that's far from the only great producer you have on this record. He just so happens to probably be the biggest name involved. You also have here Richie kind of platforming a few people, sort of on the come up of the underground realm in general, which is always nice to see. I mean, not to say that Richie's selling out Madison Square or anything like that, but I do think that he could technically be considered a bigger artist by underground standards, at least. And it's cool to see him platforming some people who are, you know, kind of rising stars within that realm, or maybe just don't have that much attention within that realm right now that are talented. I especially like the fact that he includes Niante here, on the track How as a writer, which is especially cool to see since Niante probably first came onto a lot of people's radar earlier this year back in the early weeks of March when he was featured on Mike and Tony Seltzer's Pinball, so it's nice to see him on another pretty major record for the genre this year, or at least, again, major by alternative slash underground standards at least. Now, I do think, admittedly, that there are a couple of missteps slash things that don't really click with me here on Triple Digits that prevent it from being the magnum opus adjacent kind of record that I feel like the singles in terms of quality implied that this would be, considering the best tracks off of this record are the singles, but hey, nonetheless, I don't think this is a super flawed album, just a slightly flawed one. I mean, barely cracking the 32-minute mark, I think that this is the kind of album that could have stood to go on for much longer. And, I mean, I totally respect any artist's decision to make any work that they put out as long or as short as they want it to be. 32 minutes is honestly a pretty average runtime overall. I mean, a bit shorter than your average record, but... And nonetheless, it's not a super crazy short runtime. I've heard of records that are like 15 minutes long, so who's to say that 32 minutes is that bad? But at the same time, I do kind of wish that, I don't know, maybe there's just another track or two tacked on here in some form. Not necessarily just slapped on there, because that would just kind of be randomly putting on a song that doesn't belong on the record. But at the same time, I just do wish that there was a little bit more to sink my teeth into here, because what is here is genuinely excellent. There's also a few brief moments here where Richie kind of steps into the realm of a more abstract take on cloud rap, most notably on the track The Keepers, and those passages don't really click with me 100%. I mean, they're fine, they just feel less exhilarating than some of the other experiments that you have going on here that feel so much more unique to Richie's own specific set of skills. I mean, cloud rap is a very interesting genre, of course. There's tons of crazy, insane, left-field experimental stuff going on within cloud rap and online era rap subgenres at all times constantly, but I feel like at the same time, Richie's own identity is kind of completely distanced from that in terms of the kind of experiments that he tends to participate in. I don't really associate any of the other tracks on this record or most of the other tracks on this record with any sort of current movements or anything like that or past movements i don't really associate anything he's done with by storm or injury reserve or any other project he's been involved with with anything other than themselves so it does kind of feel like it's a bit of a shame to maybe not hear him take the cloud rap sound the avant-garde cloud rap sound whatever you want to call it that he does pick up here once maybe twice to a further degree just a further distance than i think he does a lot of other tracks here in terms of their own respective sounds, but eh, I mean, it's still, they aren't bad at all. In case you needed a translation, that ramble was delusional music YouTuber for the cloud rap influences are neat, but I just feel like they could have been taken further. I will say also some of the interludes feel a bit unneeded as well, and that's a criticism that I heard the second that this record came out from friends and other people I know who had listened to the record, and I will say that I don't think that they ruined the album or anything like that, but I do slightly agree. I mean, it's not like you're getting super cringeworthy sex skits in here or anything like that, but I don't know, I feel like the interludes are just kind of filler, for lack of a better term. 
The only part of this album that could be described as an interlude that I feel really makes a positive impact on the record, and it's technically not even an interlude, it's just part of a track, but hear me out, is the end of the track The Thing towards the end of the record, where it's the father and son discussing the, the one thing machine, and then it tells the son to eat an entire party-sized bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. I feel like the surreal quality of that moment in that track caught me off guard more than most of the stuff Richie does here musically, and that's kind of saying something. But otherwise, I kind of feel like the interludes are mostly just here to kind of fluff up the record a little bit. I don't really think that they kill the momentum in the moments that they do appear or anything like that. They aren't that long. A handful of seconds per interlude doesn't really kill the energy going or anything like that. It doesn't kill the emotion on the more introspective tracks. But, you know, at the same time, they don't really serve any purpose either. I digress, this is really just me listing off a series of extremely minor flaws that takes this album from extremely good to <gasps> extremely good. It's still, it's still a great record, it's just I have some issues with it, and maybe without those issues I would think of this album even higher, but at the same time I don't really think about a lot of the problems that I do have here unless I'm really locking in and putting my ear directly to this, which I do for the sake of reviews of course, but uh, for the sake of general listening, whether I have it all in the background or I'm casually listening to it, I'm probably not going to, you know, bitch in my head about the interludes too terribly much or anything like that. Triple Digits is a beyond strong solo full-length debut for Richie. I mean, throughout this record, he manages to remove himself from any of his previous and highly critically acclaimed projects that he's been a part of, while simultaneously continuing to prove himself as, again, one of the most exciting creative minds within the realm of experimental hip-hop right now, and that makes me really happy to see. I mean, he seems like the kind of guy that's willing to tinker with a lot of sounds and influences that maybe even some of his most experimental peers aren't brave enough or aren't bold enough to experiment with themselves. The guy goes in some pretty strange and bizarre directions here without ever losing a foot in melodics or in traditional song structure for the most part at least. I constantly feel like I'm being hooked in by this record, even on tracks that I don't really go back to a ton. And I mean, generally speaking, it feels like the constant explorations of Richie's influences that are going on here makes for a record that, from an artistic standpoint alone, feels extraordinarily engaging. It just so happens that the material within those explorations also happens to be extremely memorable. Look, this may be a somewhat flawed record, but I do think that the biggest crime it commits is that it just leaves me wanting so much more than what's actually on this album. And I guess in the grand scheme of things that an album can do that negatively impact my perception of it, making me want more of it is probably not the worst thing. Maybe it's just because recently I had to review the new Machine Gun Kelly and Trippy Red, but I, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like I don't have any major issues with this record. I don't know. Maybe I'm being light on it. Who knows? Maybe I'm at the point where I'm okay with any record like this just poisoning my water supply, burning my crops, and delivering a plague onto my house, but I feel like, for the most part, the issues here, they're, they're pretty minor, and the positive qualities here are not necessarily endless, but definitely have a pretty, pretty long list. So yeah, if you heard about Richie's solo debut, and you, for whatever reason, think that the work that he's done with Injury Reserve and By Storm doesn't add up to a promising solo career, then... Well, first of all, I don't know what to tell you, you're delusional, but second of all, I will also say that you are incorrect. This is a great solo debut, and if you liked either of those projects, go check this one out. Or if you just like crazy, experimental, unpredictable stuff where you don't really necessarily know what's going to happen next, yet at the same time everything feels flush and well executed and impassioned, then give this one a listen. Basically, just, just listen to it is my point. I'm going to give this record 4 stars out of 5. And with that being said, that is the end of this album review. I've been Zay from the Infinite Jukebox. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.